of the Mixtapes and Tasty Cakes podcast. I'm Bert Lepore. He's Samuel Monte Carlo. We're hanging here with Angry Mike D. And we talk about music, movies. All right. Here we are. Another episode of Mixtapes and Tasty Cakes, episode 99. And with that being said, we're going to review the Aussie record, patient number nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, we this have came a out. little mixed feelings on this record, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'll start out saying that, um, honestly, man, up until, like, No More Tears, m- maybe Osmosis, I'm pretty much Aussied out. I kind of checked out a long time ago for for uh, various reasons. Not Ozzy's fault, but uh, I, I, I played in a band with somebody many, many years ago, and he was just like, like the ultimate Aussie guy, and that's all he listened to, and that's all he talked about. That's all he wore were Ozzy shirts. He go in his car, he's got Ozzy. It was like Ozzy nonstop, wow. dude. And it was just like uh, I played in a band with him for maybe like a year and a half, and we probably hung out for like a couple years. And it was just like, come on, Damien, try this bad head, <laughs> dude. I, I I listened to enough Ozzy and Sabbath to, to last uh, uh, 666 lifetimes, <laughs> so <laughs> it, it it it's really really hard for me to uh, to listen to it. This guy just absolutely killed it for me. Right. Um, but I I try to go in there with you know with an open mind. You know, I mean <clears> I, <throat> the Sabbath stuff I could still listen to. I could still listen to. You know, the Aussie stuff, like up and like I said, up to No More Tears, maybe Osmosis or some stuff I like. But after that, it's just kind of it, it, it's it's really hard for me. Uh, it, it's know. weird. Up to No More Tears, almost I like every album pretty much fully through. Uh, after that, there's been some albums where they had some great <laughs> songs on it and the rest of the album was kind of OK. Like Osmosis, Perry Mason, fucking great song. Um, Down the Earth. That that one song gets me through. What a great song! And the rest of it's okay, but they're like, there's at least one great song, and that I think that's what happens with this one for me too. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, uh, Broken Clock is right twice a day, so yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. listen, I, I still rather have Ozzy than no Ozzy, <laughs> even if I get one great song out of it. You know, uh, I just I'm love with it. you on that a little bit. You know, I, I think I, I I had a point or two just because he was Ozzy. Sure, I'm not gonna lie. Sure, I love his voice in general. I, I love, I love his. Yeah, voice. it's. I don't know, man. You, you, you kind of wonder if, like, you know, if Sharon wasn't as powerful as she was, like, you know, if, if he would even have a career like this. She's such a huge part of it that people Absolutely. don't give, give her credit. I mean, she is, she is sort of like the mm-hmm. evil empire. Yeah. Um. And you know, I personally, I can't stand her, but you know, <laughs> she is what she is. I mean, uh, she, she's a great manager, and she pretty much. Uh, you know, I, I, Ozzy is practically on his probably his deathbed now, and uh, hate to say that, but uh, you know she keeps on pushing him out there, so it's he's going to outlive us all. Yeah, right. I'll tell you what, though, and whatever they're doing, he sounds great on the record. I mean, you could tell it's definitely studio magic. Studio. I, I would love to learn the trick. I wish I knew the trick. <laughs> you know. How well, much money you got? <laughs> it, it sounds strong. It sounds strong. I mean, I mean you could probably download a program and sound like us. Well, let me know if you yeah. find it. <laughs> uh, all right. So what we're going to do here, we're going to all give our own personal um, countdown here. And uh, and then we'll do one. You know, I'll read off a p- the panel total together. And uh, all right. So, Dame, what do you have at track number 12? Uh, for 12, I have... Um... Actually, hold on. Give me a second. I kind of. Okay. For 12, I had uh, nothing feels right. Um, and uh, I, I don't know, man, if it's just like. Uh, I, uh, Zach <laughs> is on that song and um, I don't know, it kind of starts off slow. Like I think like a lot of these songs on this album start out the same way right um i don't know if you guys have noticed that but oh yeah i, I got have. into my notes yeah you know and they all the, or they all start out with like guitar intros or something or um 
I don't know. Like they all seem to have the same formula, you know? Right. Right. But, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I gave this one a, uh, a 2.5 and, um, out of five. Okay. And, what uh, song did you say again? Dan? He said the evil Nothing shuffle was his 12th pick. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that wait, what was it? No, on my list I had, uh, Oh, that's my twelfth pick. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, no, nothing. Nothing feels right. Is nothing my, feels right. Is my twelfth pick. Yep, that's the, that's the worst track I think on on the record, in my opinion. Right. Um, but there's a lot of them that are uh, pretty damn close. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I kind of felt like I was being really generous with really with the ratings I I gave. Yeah. Well, Mike D, how about you for twelve? Well, I had God only knows, and and this could be very interchangeable for me for like the next maybe six picks, right? Because it, it was just I, I kind of went through it and I had to pick the ones that I really liked, which I'm going to say slim. And then it was kind of like everything else was just very I don't know ho hum, so to say. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't know. I went with the God only knows. I really, I mean. A lot of the stuff sounded the same. Music was great on this album. But the production to me just, I mean, I, we listened to it on vinyl. We listened to it streaming. And I didn't listen to the CD, but I don't know. I, I feel like the production could have been a little better. It sounded very, very muddy on, on the album. And very, like, high-end on the stream. But equally muddy. So I don't know. That didn't didn't do it for me, but you could hear that it was the music was great. You know, besides that, yeah. Uh, for me, I went with the last track on the record for um, the the worst one for me was "Evil Shuffle." Uh, it's okay for what it is, but it's probably a skip song for me. I probably definitely skip it. I gave that like a two. Um, Demo, which got in number eleven? Number eleven, I have. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, one of those days featuring Eric Clapton and probably because Eric Clapton was on and I gave it a 2.7 slightly higher than the other one <laughs> and it's another song that starts out with a slow guitar intro um, uh, it was just uh, could have had Clapton could have had Jesus Christ on it wouldn't change it that much <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was just boring man I don't know well, he didn't believe in Jesus Christ. It might have been a little higher if you, if you put him on there. <laughs> right, right. Well, they said that uh, Clapton had a problem with that line, but they kept it anyway. <laughs> he was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, it was weird. Mike D, what you got in 11? Uh, again, I, with uh, just another lump again, the degradation rules. Gave it a 2.5. Yeah, great music, just very non-memorable. Yeah, I think that's the problem with some of this record. Some of it's, it's it's good, but not memorable. If that makes any sense. Um, number eleven for me, dead and gone. Um, just like Dame said, too many slow things on the record. Uh, it's not a bad tune, but you know, one slow tune, two slow tunes. You don't need more than that. You, you know, like I said, it all starts sounding like the same formula. Um, yeah, one's enough. You know, uh, I gave it a three though. I gave it you know decent. You know, Damo, what you got in at ten? Uh, 10, I had Parasite. Uh, I gave that one a 2.75. Um, it's not, it's not terrible. Uh, there, there is like the intro riff is, uh, is pretty cool. I like that, but everything else seems so like radio, like generic radio rock to mm -hmm. me. I think I was the same on that one. Like, oh, that sounds really cool. Oh man, what happened? Yeah. Like the intro riff is cool. I, I, I'm actually playing it. I'm actually playing all my all my picks as we uh, as we mentioned them on Spotify. You guys can't hear it, so it's kind of right. it's, oh, it's refreshing my memory. Yeah, and uh, because without that, I totally wouldn't remember anything. Yeah. So we, we suck. <laughs> Got to get with the technology. Yeah, and so I, I keep it at a super low volume. I'm hearing it right now. <laughs> I, uh, I, I shouldn't have gave away my secret. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, it just sounds like to me. It just sounds like. Like a, a, did you do? You, are you listening to it now for the first time, Dave? No, no, dude. I, I, I listened to it. I, I, honestly, I think I listened to it maybe three or four times. Yeah, already. Yeah. Same here. Uh, yes, 
I, 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 I gave it an honest, uh, honest listen, three, four time listen. Um, you know, and as we're going through this list, I'm, I'm listening to uh, the ones I had that I chose. <clears throat> so it's kind of, you know, it's triggering back uh, my memories. But yeah, the, the song, uh, it's a, it got a cool intro riff, but everything, the, the chorus, the melody line and everything just seems like real like um, generic radio rock. And it's probably, it'll probably be a hit on radio, you know, mm-hmm. what the hell do I know? But, you know, it's just my opinion. Yep. Mike D, what do you got to tell? And I have uh, one of those days. I almost thought it was going to come at you like that limp biscuit. It's one of those days, <laughs> uh, which which would have actually gave it a lower score, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, two point five. I gave it. Yeah, for me, um, number ten. Only God knows. Uh, it's okay. It's middle line. It's it's like a three, and it's probably because it's Aussie. It's a three. Um, nothing really memorable. It's just okay. The words are okay. It's okay. Yeah, nothing really too, too special about that. Uh, Dame, what do you have in number nine? Uh, for number nine, I have uh, Mr. Darkness, which, guess what, guys? How's this song start? With a slow intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. It's a little moodier than the other ones, so I, I give it a, a slightly higher rating. But I gave this one a two point eight, and I, a lot of these songs on the on the record I have rated pretty closely. Um, yeah, but it's uh, slightly better than the other ones. But you know, the chorus is is better, um, and Zach is on it. But um, yeah, it, it's it's just it's just okay. I mean, it picks up. The song starts picking up, but. You know, yep, Mikey D. What do you got? Number nine, number nine. I, I probably put this higher than the other ones, but I still gave it a 2.5. The evil shuffle, maybe just because of the title of it, but otherwise, <laughs> it was just blah. Yeah, yeah, not terrible, not great. Well, just you know what the problem the with the evil shuffle song? It sounds like something that was on the last record that with the stop and go thing, it was it was done already in the last record. That's yeah, all. but you know what? I, and I'm going to say that last record was so far. It was a fun album, and I kind of thought this would be a little more on that, you yeah. know, funness. And it, it kind of just, you know, went back about five albums, you know. It's too like we heard it before. Yeah, a lot much. of stuff we heard before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, number nine, Immortal, with uh, McCready on it, Mike McCready. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah what the hell is he doing on that? Well, he he's I guess he's a fan. Uh I, it's, I thought um, that was the best track, and I hate, I hate that freaking yeah. Pearl Jam. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the song, the song, it's just okay. It's not bad. It's just not really memorable. And there's one part in the mix where there's this loud noise that had to be a mistake. There's no way that was supposed to be there. It's it almost like the first time I heard, it, I thought it was like maybe the streaming or something. It's like it's loud out of nowhere, and I'm like, what the mm. hell was that? So that was kind of weird. But I gave it out a three point two five, so a little bit better. Than midway, um, Damo, what did you got for number eight? Uh, degradation rules, uh, with Tony Iommi. Um, it's not bad. Um, I mean, it doesn't sound like it would be a Sabbath song, which is kind of you know, you think you would probably put Tony on a song that uh has like a Sabbath sounding vibe to it. Um, another one, just a you know, nothing really special. Uh, I gave this, I, I rated this one uh, 2.85. Um, yeah, this is a fair song, you know. Mike D, number eight. I went with Nothing Feels Right. I gave it a 2.5 and yeah, Nothing Feels Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike went simple with it, one line. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, for me, number eight, Mr. Darkness. With Zach Wild on it, uh, I kind of did this. It's got a cool intro. It kind of has a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of that Diary of a Madman kind of vibe to it. Um, a little Ultimate Sin sound too at, po- at points. He's got some of that Ultimate Sin kind of wine to it. Um, I think if I listen to this one more, I'll probably like it even more. It's one of those songs. So uh, this is one I gave it a three point five. I think it could probably get bumped to a four eventually. I think uh, I think it's pretty cool. Demo, number seven. 
Seven, I had uh, a thousand shades. Uh, Jeff Beck is on this track. I I, I kind of like this one. Um, uh, you know, as far as the slow ones go, uh, definitely seems like it's got a little bit more going on. I think guitar work is is great. Mm -hmm. uh, especially like the the melody. You know, it's in the intro and after the chorus. It's pretty cool. But um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool too. I'm not going to hate on it. I should probably I probably should have rated this a little bit higher. Now that I'm now, are you thinking about it? growing? <laughs> you know, yeah, but but you know, uh, according on my list, it, it kind of sits right in the middle. So yeah, yep. Uh, Mike D, number seven went, for you. I went with Immortal again, two point five. Nothing memorable for me. A lot of midway stuff for you. Yeah, same thing. With yeah, you. a lot of midway stuff. And I think I'm being lenient. You know, I don't know. I'm not being totally true. I guess. I'm I'm giving a little extra because it's Ozzy and he's seventy, what three years old. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I think he deserves it. Yeah. Uh, my number seven is Parasite with Zach Wild on it. Uh, it's a real good riff. It's a real good riff. But I think the problem with this song is the chorus is good, but the chorus comes out of nowhere. Like it's just like bang radio. Like you said earlier, Dame. It's just like all right, let's make it sound radio. Let's put this over big chorus on something that kind of is really dark during the riff it's it was it's a weird mashup for me not a, i mean not a bad song though i gave it a three six you know not bad damo what do you got for number six number six i have uh god only knows uh i gave it a 2.95 and they don't have the featured guitar player so i guess it's uh andrew watt who's Probably, yeah. uh ozzy's uh producer and songwriter and uh, he also does all the post malone records and uh i saw actually saw him live about 10 years uh, maybe like eight years ago i saw him uh really? he had a band with uh, glenn hughes and uh jason bonham called california breed that'd be um, pretty cool right yeah they're a pretty cool band me and jaron went up to go uh, went up to new york to go see them um but it's funny you know because he was a super young guy back then you know yeah. he's probably like in his 20s and now he's like a like a pretty big deal uh, producer but yeah yeah this is uh again it's a slower tune a lot of these songs are real are real slow and that that you definitely lose points with me on that i kind of like the, the fast shit especially for ozzy um but regardless it's a, it's a good tune which is why i ranked it uh where it is mike d number six number six i went with parasite yeah we heard it all before it's very <laughs> poppy and yeah, at first I, I can't thinking, really add much to what Albert said on that. <laughs> at, at first, I was thinking like I'm like, wow, they did they, they covered a Kiss song. That's the first. That's my what first I was wondering. I'm looking at yeah. it, that's title. one of my favorite Kiss songs. I'm like, wow, Ozzy's going to do Parasite from Kiss. You know, <laughs> didn't happen, but that might that might be my favorite. Kiss I would love Parasite. to hear Ozzy do a Kiss song. You know, like you know, like a Gene one or something, and make it Ozzy fight. You know. Yeah, you know, he'll probably yeah. pull off charisma or something like that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Who I tell my body, whatever the hell we were. <laughs> <laughs> charisma. Um, okay, for my number six, one of those days with Eric Clapton. It's kind of pretty cool to hear Clapton and Ozzy together. Um, the solo part, you know, where he's playing the wah wah, has a real cool cream feel to it. Like that's like you don't, you know, Clapton don't do that as much now, and uh. Not that mm. I'm a big Clapton guy, but I like the cream stuff. So that was kind of cool. Um, the Wah Wah was neat. Uh, the chorus is really catchy, almost too catchy. Like that song's made for radio, you know, um, but it's the chorus. Uh, I gave that like a three, six, the same thing as the other one, three, three point six. Damo, what you got coming in at number five? Number five, I've, I have uh, no escape from now. I gave it a three point one. Uh, this one has uh, Tony Iommi on guitar, and this one does sound kind of like a Sabbath song. And guess what? Starts out with a slow <laughs> guitar intro, <laughs> and Ozzy's got like this flanger effect on his voice, uh, which is kind of reminiscent of like uh, Planet Caravan. So I wrote, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, towards the end, there's like there's like this cool, um, like a cool different part, like a cool like jamming part, which is probably why I rated it so high. I gave it a three point one. Um. So yeah, that's all I got on that one. Mike D, number five. 
Number five, I went with Mr. Darkness, and I probably would have gave this a little bit more of a rating. I gave it a number three if it wasn't for that freaking annoying voice at the end of it. You don't even know my name, so <laughs> yeah, that was stupid. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of that was that was. I'm weird. being I'm being petty on that, but yeah, it wasn't a bad song. There was no need just, to even put that on there. Though. Yeah. Just not very memorable either, but yeah. just you know, I kind of dug that one. Um, I mean, for what it was, it was good. It was just. I don't know. We, we've heard it before with him, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, number five, A Thousand Shades with Jeff Beck. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of So Tired from Bark at the Moon. Just a little bit. He's got mm-hmm. that old Ozzy kind of sound going on there, but the chorus is a lot bigger. Uh, it's an okay ballad. Uh, it's probably a better ballad that's on here, you know, a better slow track. Uh, same thing. This middle line, a little better than the middle line, 3.6 again. That's like three in a row for 3.6 for me. What do you got, Damo, for number four? Four, I have uh, Evil Shuffle. I gave it a 3.15, and uh, I think the only reason why I rated it so high is because it reminded me of Stand Up and Shout from the Rockstar movie. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys remember that one, if not, go back. And, no. Uh, well, if you go listen to it, it's very reminiscent of it. And Zach actually played guitar on that, on those songs in that movie. That's funny. Um, which I'm sure I, there was, you know, that didn't even mean anything. No. Kind of song. It was, probably just <laughs> it was but, just probably um, like a little jam, you know. Um, Where are we at here? Uh, number four, Mike. Or number four on the on the verse, I mean chorus. Huh? I, I'm done now. Bert was giving you the hook, I think. I know he gave me the big hook. Like Mike number four, right in the middle. Of <laughs> Damien talk. I'm like, um, uh, it took him long. <laughs> Damien took, <laughs> took him long. I guess. That's nah, all right. Maybe, he deserved maybe, it. Maybe, maybe I was what? breaking up. I was talking nonstop. Oh, I didn't time. hear you. Yeah, I didn't hear yeah. you. <laughs> he, 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 he was giving you the. He was ready to hit the mute button on. Thinking, you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, I know. You got the gong thing by mistake. Yeah, for real. They started playing the award ceremony song. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't, I didn't hear you. <laughs> uh, Mike D, four. Four, I went with Dead and Gone, and I don't know why. <laughs> I must have liked it the first couple times I heard it. I think by the third time I heard this album, I was just sick and tired of hearing Ozzy's voice, that everything just sounded the same, and it was just easier for me to place the ones at that point that I didn't like. So there you go. Yeah, <laughs> for me, nothing feels right with Zach Wild on it. It's got it sounds like a track that could have been like filler on No More Tears. Pretty good, you know, average 3.6 again. By the way, um, I gave mine a three. I'm sorry, I don't think I said it. That's all right. I probably would have cut you off anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to get I was trying to get everything in before you cut me off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, You're yeah, making for- me nervous now. <laughs> And yeah. it wasn't even me you did it to. <laughs> That's funny. It's been a long week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Demo, number three. We're getting down the brass tags here. Uh, number three, I have uh, patient number nine. And I gave that uh, a 3.3. And um, it's a, it, yeah, it's a decent song. Um, there's one part that I absolutely can't stand it and i probably would have rated it number one if it wasn't for it but i think it's in the pre-course this his melody line i've heard that that Bad whole band. thing and like <laughs> i've heard it like in a million songs i do love that it on the radio it's it's not original at all uh-huh. like not that everything is but it's just like it, it, it's not really it's not very ozzy and um i've just heard it it's been like modern rock songs. I mean, I don't know. Ozzy should do Ozzy, not not uh, Breaking Benjamin or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mike D, number three. I went with a Thousand Shades. And again, don't really know why, but I liked it a notch above the others. I gave it a three okay. also. Uh, for me, three de- degradation rules. Uh, it's another tune with Iomi. It's definitely got the Sabbath sound to it for me. Dame didn't think so. I thought so. Um, the song's decent. I like the melody. I think the melody's really good. I gave it a 3.75. Uh, and the vocal effect, I kind of dig. Um, 
Demo, number two. Um, dead and gone. I gave us 3.4. Um, dude, this is this is a great tune. Like, um, doesn't again, it doesn't even sound like an Ozzy song. I mean, I like the driving, you know, the bass and drums are kind of like driving, and I wish it was higher in the mix. They kind of mix the bass and drums kind of low, but if it was mixed, dude, it's like fucking pounding, like driving rhythm section and uh you know cool guitar and uh yeah the, the uh, ozzy's melodies are really good um yeah I, I i really like this one a lot mike d number two number two reluctantly patient number nine and, and only because it's stuck in my head i heard that before the whole album like a lot of times and uh but for me it was just for something you're releasing, like it was just too long. Like I'm going to give you a bad reference, but it's not November rain. You don't have to make a seven minute song. I it think is, it was it a was Jeff long. Beck thing. It was a Jeff Beck thing, probably. I, I don't care, but it just like it, it, it could have been like a three minute song, and it was yeah. just too it drawn was, out. It was a little long. Yeah, it didn't need to be. I agree with that. Uh, but it, it stuck in my head, so I can't, you know, not put it high on the list. Yeah, it was memorable. Yeah, uh, number two for me, "No Escape from Now" with Iomi. Um, man, the intro is great. Uh, it really, really has the Sabbath sound to it. Uh, definitely, Dame said it earlier. Planet Caravan, absolutely, that's where they went with it. Same, same kind of effect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like it. I love Sabbath, so I definitely dug this track. Um, yeah, comes in number two for me. Demo drum roll. <laughs> What do you got for number one? Uh, number one was probably the easiest one to pick as my favorite, and it was uh, Immortal with uh, Pearl Jam's Mike McCready, guitar shredder, that? Mike McCready, from the best band on planet, <laughs> Pearl Jam. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, it was easy to pick just because of I didn't care who the hell was on guitar um, on it, but uh, yeah, it just it was the the fastest the song most up tempo um it definitely was different than everything else and i wish all the songs were were kind of more in this vein it's a f- pretty fucking boring record man i got to tell you I, I was i was i really forced myself to listen they, after <laughs> one listen last friday when it came out i was like ooh this is going to be rough i i listened to it three four more times and uh i tried to be um you know as nice as possible about it, but everybody's saying how great how great the record is. So, um, you know, <laughs> all the line now. Yeah, right, <laughs> but, right. But th- this one I definitely liked the best just because it was uh, the, the whole feel. I actually my yeah my top two I liked the best because they had they were a different different feel wise. You know, more Aussie like than all the other songs. I wish I wish this song. And it's clearly, you know, I rated the best. It doesn't even stack up against any of the best Ozzy songs ever, but it was <clears throat> as close as it's going to get is why I, I picked it like that. You know, Ozzy should, Ozzy should not sound like Black Sabbath. Right. Black Sabbath and Ozzy were to- two totally different bands. There's, there's no reason why Ozzy should make a, a Black Sabbath record unless it's with Black, Black Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah. You know, yeah, he was a part of it, but he didn't write any of their songs. I mean, I think it's common knowledge. He's about like wrote all the lyrics. Yep. Um, he didn't even have a hand in the songwriting. Maybe the, the vocal melodies, I think he did. But, you know, when I hear Ozzy, I think of Park the Moon. I think of, uh, you know, I Don't Know. Um, you know, shit like that. You know, like that that kind of like guitar sound, that, you know. Right. Not that, not that deep kind of chuggy. Yeah, kinda. not that. Right, not that grungy slow kind of low kind of yeah, but yeah, it's just my opinion. <laughs> Mike D, what do you got in number one? Number one, no escape from now. I just thought it was just a cool song, you know. Yeah, it was Sabbathy, but maybe that's why it was more memorable. Yep. Uh for me, you know, I, I that was my only that. four, and I probably should have been a little lower, but yeah, yeah. I mean for me. I went with the obvious choice, patient number nine with Jeff Beck. Uh, I just, I love it. I mean, it's to me, it sticks in your head. It's a great guitar riff, even though we heard it before. The chorus is great. Uh, it's one of my favorite songs. He probably put it out in the last 
10 years or so. Um, I mean, if I made a mixtape, I probably would put the song on here. That chorus is so memorable to me. Um, yeah, I mean, I really, really like this song a lot. It was because that had been the problem, though. Like, there was just so many guest artists on there that it was like just never really an Aussie album. Well, I mean, at this, I, I, at this I think, point, he's on he's on yeah <laughs> autopilot probably. I mean, I, I think all those guys just played the solos. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, I, I yeah, I, I don't know. See, That's what I'm. Yeah, I, I can't see Eric Clapton coming in and playing like a full song. He's like he's just probably, probably doing just like, special stuff over right. Right. Yeah. yeah, solos yeah. and uh, guitar overdubs or or whatever. You know, yep. I think I think the the producer kind of did everything. Probably, yeah. All right, guys. So now we're going to give you the panel total. We average everything out. And uh, this is our, our panel countdown. At number 12, Evil Shuffle. At number 11, God Only Knows. At number 10, Nothing Feels Right. At number 9, Parasite. At number 8, One of Those Days. At number 7, Degradation Rules. At number 6, Immortal. At number 5, Dead and Gone. At number 4, Mr. Darkness. At number 3, A Thousand Shades. At number two, no escape from now. And at number one, patient number nine. So uh, I guess we gave it an average of three, I think. So for mixtape tasty cakes, by the time we did everything, you were a little you were almost three points, Dame. Mike was a little under it, and I was a little over it. So mm-hmm. we wound up averaging out to about a three. So uh we'll wrap up the Aussie review here saying, Dame, just so you want to give me your last synopsis on it. On the record, uh, Ozzy sounds good. You know, I'm sure there's uh, some studio trickery. He sounds he sounds better than you would think. Uh, it's sort of on par with the last record. Last record's probably a little bit better. Um, you know, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't have bought it. I, thank God for Spotify for that. <laughs> I would have been disappointed if I forked out whatever it is, 10, 15 bucks for it. But uh, hey, it's just, it's just my opinion, you know. I I I don't like slow plotting music. Even the Sabbath stuff was had some had some you know up, more up tempo songs, you know. But uh, just just what I like, you know. Now, Dame, do you think he's going to put out another record? No, I can't record. see that happening. I, I I think I think they they pumped out this one quick. It was one when the last record come out. It was like two, two years, years ago. Two years. Yeah, so they did this one knowing. You know he's getting old and his health is is in decline. So I don't think there's he's going to do another one. But hey, absolutely, maybe. right? Yeah, yeah. Mike D, your synopsis on the record. I mean, if you want it in your collection, why not? But I mean, it's definitely not one of his most memorable records by any means. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. You know, do you think he's going to put out another record? You think I, I think he's going to put another one out. You do? Oh yeah, they're they're going to prop him up like Weekend at Bernie's. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. The same thing. It's like it's like Ozzy is pretty much like Bernie now. I think. I wonder if he's <laughs> how much of he's actually singing and how much is actually corrective uh, auto tunes in, in there. Yeah. I mean, he. Uh, he did sound good from what I heard on this on that uh, football game. That was all. That was but, all tracked. R- was it tracked then? Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, which I, I I will say that usually in those situations, no matter who you are, it's going to be tracked because it's, you know, they don't want any any uh, any audio issues and everything. So, you know, we got but, tracked uh, for nothing. He didn't even get shown on TV. Yeah, yeah. that was crazy. Yeah. But you know what? I'm not really I'm not really surprised at that because it's not like the Super Bowl, right? You know, you, you never well, see any on. halftime shows. Look, but if if that was Snoop Dogg, we we would have had to sit there and watch every minute of it. So, <laughs> you know, come on, could be yeah. For, for, it's not the any... Super Bowl, but you know, why have yeah. Ozzy there if you're not going to show him? It's like, come on, or right, just yeah. have him there. Not, I mean, listen. What they did do for it was probably it was on Peacock. I think that was the deal. And people at Peacock watched the full thing and it was a good promotion for Ozzy's record came out the next day. And that's that's all pretty much was. It was a promotion for the people in that the LA area, you know, almost mm-hmm. like a, a signing, you know, if you, you're an in store. So it was a big thing probably because his album's coming out. He was I think he was doing a signing the next day. So that's what it probably was. We only got to see a couple minutes of it, but Peacock had the whole thing, which means if you subscribe to Peacock, which a lot of people do know because it's kind of cheap. 
Mm -hmm. you, you got a chance to see. I think that's what the whole thing was. The average viewer were like, what the hell? No respect for Ozzy? You know what I mean? That's the, that's our first look, Watch it on the so. cock. Yeah, exactly. Um, I I think the album was decent. I don't was was it a great Ozzy record? No. Was it just as good or worse than I don't know down the earth? Probably it's around that area, osmosis or somewhere around there. Um, I think the last one might have been a little bit better. I really like yeah. that little Green Man song on the last one a lot. So uh, uh, even the track he did with uh, what's his name was fun. I had. What Post the Malone. Like a Post Malone, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was okay. The last record, it was a little more fun. I would say this one's a little mm -hmm. was a little more down. You know, um, a little more melancholy. Um, too many slow songs on it, or too many slow intros. And yeah. but but look, at the end of the day, I'll buy the next Ozzy if there's another one. I love Ozzy. I'll just buy it no matter what because I love his voice. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to buy it no matter what. You know. But um, he might squeeze out another one. I don't know. If he does it within the next year, year and a half, I was surprised this one came so quick. Because, you know, yeah. he takes for, he usually takes forever, you know? So, uh, well, I think there's going to be a tour. I don't think there's going to be a tour. I don't believe that. Nah, dude, no way. No way. Maybe a couple pop-up dates or something. Yeah, maybe. Maybe a few here and there. Yeah, festivals maybe or something. I don't know. I, I saw him maybe, maybe like four he years ago. He said he doesn't like, want to give it up. Yeah, yeah. I I saw him like four years ago at a festival, man. He it was bad. I mean, I hate to say that it was. You know, I give him credit for going out there, but uh, we just put him on a throne and give him a mic, and yeah, you know, and nobody has to know the throne is actually his commode. You know, we're all yeah, good, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's sad that a lot of our, you know, the guys that we like are all, you know, we're all getting old. They're all getting up here now. The kids yeah, guys are just, up there uh... now. Yeah, Ozzy's up there now. Iomi, all, all those guys are shit. It's it's weird seeing them get this old, you know. Yeah, and it's hard. Oh, you gotta you gotta good. find the, the, the good new music, you know. Yeah, but you know, it's still it's you know that's that's our genre, you know. It's what we remember. Um, but you know, he's one of those guys that people will will remember forever. The next generation will find Ozzy, find Sabbath, and it's just you know. They weren't, he wasn't a flat or he's not a flash in the pan, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, but it's hard for anybody that's still putting out music for this long to come out with something great. That's why I guess Paul Stanley, even though I don't agree with him, I get what Paul Stanley says when he goes, why make new music? It's never going to top the old stuff. Nobody cares. And I get, I kind of get what he's saying, but at the same time as an artist, but they, you know, Hey, shit, they were successful, you know? So I can't really judge on that. I understand why he wouldn't do it because people don't appreciate it. He probably feels, and I get yeah, that. I, I, yeah, if he, they play a new song live, it's a chance for someone to get a, a beer or take a yeah. kiss. Yeah, and even at, like it's anybody. You know, well, we have we have that agreement. We always talk about somebody could put could put out a great song, and Old Bank could put out a great great song, and the radio will not play it. They'll play a track from '85. <laughs> like mm -hmm. they don't give it a shot anymore. You know. I don't know. I think even like I don't know how many people listen to regular radio now or anything. If if, if that's even that big of a thing right now, but you would hear that's how almost like MTV they they would push new stuff. You would hear different stuff. It's almost like ah, oh, we got to stay in a format. The format. The format. It's like it's it's beat, and that's why people stop listening. The format. Mm -hmm. You got to have or have different shows. You know, on this guy's show, we play a, a different genre, or brand new stuff, or. I mean, forget a little it. heavier sound, heavier music or whatever. Yeah. I mean, listen, they used to have that loud and local show back in the day, and that was kind of cool. But I mean, like as far as a band that's not a signed band, I mean, you think you would have an hour they used to play. Yeah, uh, used to get Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumblers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you would give like an hour or two to to bands that are unknown and give them a fucking shot. Play something that's unknown during a prime time just to throw it in there and just see what happens. I'm surprised they don't try that stuff. Throw it up against the wall. You never know, you know, mm, because because it's ratings and people see something that they're not familiar with and they just turn it off. Yeah, everybody becomes like a YouTube sensation now. It's yeah. like yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that, that's like a way where they need to be recognized, uh, you know, on there and before they throw them in a on a platform like somewhere on TV where it's uh, people, you know, ratings and. Uh, 
and uh, what do you call it? Commercials and shit like yeah. that. Ads are very, uh, very well, sensitive. It know? just it just drives me nuts that everybody wants everything. You know, the, the big companies want stuff already that's done. Okay, we already know this is going to be profitable. Now we can probably double it because it's already profitable. They don't take anybody and have development and make them profitable. Mm. <laughs> you yeah, don't they don't see that. Take they don't create like like we talk wrestling all the time. You got to create stars. If you don't create stars, you're still going to go back to the rocks. The and you know, we love those guys, the yeah, Hogan's, the rocks. You gotta, but you got to put new guys over. You got to you got to create new stars, and that goes for anything sports. You know, any yeah. kind of sports. You know, when you have a shit talker in football, and he's great, he's memorable for whatever reason, love him or hate him, he's memorable. You got to create stars, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so that's I mean that's pretty much where that's at. Uh, all right, guys. So before we wrap up, uh, we're gonna go. Back to some dunk questions. We haven't done this in a while. <laughs> Damien first, then Mike, and then me. All right, Damo, here we go. Some dunk questions. If you had your choice, curly fries, steak fries, or shoestring fries? Mm. Uh, I'd probably say steak fries. Damo, go with the old school steak fries. Yeah. yeah. It's a tough one. It's also between those and the curlies. <laughs> yeah. Mike D. Steak fries, man. Steak fries, well done. Nothing better. Yeah. Okay, Mike D with the steak fries. Yeah. Um, I want to go with the shoestring. <laughs> I like the small ones. I like the small ones. If they're McDonald's. If they're McDonald's yeah. shoestrings. <laughs> but, you know, nobody gets it right after that. Right. Yeah. right. Checkers are pretty damn good. Checkers are good. Don't, I don't. I never really. Had yes, checkers. they are. Oh God, man! It's fucking crack cocaine. <laughs> that good. The checkers, the checkers, the checkers is good. Are that good. Yeah, and and the champ burger. I never had that was, it. That was my good. I used to get the uh, the big Buford. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's big another Buford. good one. Yeah. Well, I, I th- the one down here I think is closed. Uh, and they, oh, they, is it? I didn't know that. I think so. And they, and they started getting real real filthy in there anyway, but. Man, I used to go to that place all the time. Oh, yeah. Years I never ago, really did absolutely. check. It. Nope. Uh, Demo. For ice cream, mint chocolate chip, green or white? Huh. Uh, I would say green. Demo goes with the green. Mike yeah. D. Now, I've read somewhere they're both the same, but I prefer the green. Yeah. Uh, it seems like it's better for some reason. It's going to be a hat trick. I'm going to go with the green, too. I think the green, I don't know if it's in my head, but I think it tastes more minty. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> more green. Um, next question. Damo, bagel bites or pizza rolls? Oh, fucking pizza rolls all the way. All night and day. I love those pizza rolls. <laughs> I bought like uh, I bought like five boxes of them last week. Damn, Dame, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're on sale, dollar twenty five bucks. Now, can you microwave them, or you don't want to microwave? Them? I put them in the uh, in the, uh, in the air oven. fryer. Air fryer, yeah. air fryer. Oh, it's probably good in the air fryer. Yeah, yeah, that's probably good in the air fryer. Mike uh, D, I'll dip, I'll dip them in some Oop. super hot sauce. Let's we'll try that. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> bagel bites, man. Mike, into the bagel. Oh, bites. Oh, back in the day, I was like the king of the ba- the pizza bagels. So they're kind of like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Pizza bagels are awesome. Forgot about those. Pizza bagels. Uh, I'm going to go with the pizza rolls. I haven't had them in a while. I haven't had the bagels in a while either, but uh, I'm going to go with the pizza rolls. I like the texture better. Um, Damo, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? Dunkin' Donuts. I hate Starbucks. They're, I mean, they're, they're tall and they're grande. Fuck you. <laughs> Small, medium, and large. Come on. <laughs> they're hoity-toity crap. I love it. Go love off, it. Mike. Mike D. Yeah, first of all, they both fucking suck. They both <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts used to be good. As soon as they took the donuts out of their name, they went downhill. Yeah. Their coffee just sucks. And Starbucks to me, they always sucked. It's like having burnt <laughs> coffee. Here you go, Mike. Horrible. Well, and what do you think about the names of the sizes? What do you mean? Do you hate it as much as I do? I don't Talk I haven't Monday ordered Starbucks and... in about 20 years. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I I I don't think I've ever asked for the, the the grande. I always say large or extra large. It's like 
Yeah. But Dude. yeah, um, I'll, I'll have a grande americano, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck now, out. <laughs> I'll, I'll have I'll have a large coffee black. That's how like, I order. I don't know. I think Starbucks people believe Starbucks is good because Starbucks tells you they're good because I think yeah. they just blow. Yeah, yeah. their their marketing is excellent. Well, listen. <laughs> I like my coffee like I like my strip clubs. Dirty. I'm going Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing fancy here, sir. <laughs> I prefer my coffee. Uh, uh, I, I do I do like Dunkin' Donuts coffee, though. I do. I do, too. I do, too. I think I it went prefer. downhill. I don't know what happened yeah. to it. Well, everything went downhill. I know, <laughs> it, it, it did. I, 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 don't, I don't disagree with you at all. I mean, uh, they used to make their own donuts. Now they get them. Now they weird. Have to get them. Ain't it weird? I have to get a flavor in their coffee now because it just sucks so bad. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. All right, Dan. Well, speaking of donuts, if you were going to get a donut right now, what's your go-to donut? Uh, Probably the... Uh, I get the chocolate glazed. Damo, with the chocolate glazed. How about you, Mike D? I'd probably go with a sugar jelly donut. I can't, you know, I, I like jelly. I can't do I can't do the jelly donut that way. Don't, I don't know why. Krispy Kreme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, not overrated, maybe. I don't know. Oh, man. Overrated. Uh, yeah, but even donuts. Dunkin' Donuts isn't as good as they used to be with the donuts. So. No, it, it tastes fake yeah. now. I'm, I don't I even think f- they make... They don't even make them on the premises now. I don't no, they no, don't. Dan no. was just saying that. No. They no. get them shipped in or something. There, there, there's a... Right by where I work, there's a place... <clears throat> Uh, right, right next door, right, right across from us, that makes the donuts from Dunkin' Donuts. Like, remember the old commercials? The guy time to make the donuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guy time to heat I, up the donuts. <laughs> I, I, I used to thought it was. I used to think it was um, Mean Gene Oakley. <laughs> <Like his, laughs> kind of looks brother. He's got that mustache. <laughs> the mustache. Yeah. yeah. Now they're getting their donuts shipped in from China. Oh, we might have to edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it's a Boston cream. I usually dig the Boston creams. Um, okay. I have no clue what this is. I've seen it. I never had one. Damien, have you ever had, uh, if I say it's right, a boba drink, a boba tea drink? Bubble tea? How do you say it? Bubble. Bubble or bubble? 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 Yeah. There's bubble. no L in it. Is there an L it's in just... it? No. Right? How do you spell it? B-O-B-B-A. B-O-B-B-A. Is it boba tea? Boba, boba tea. Oh, okay. Maybe, uh, so they call it a bubble tea. They might uh, call it in some places. Yeah, yeah. It, they American. Yeah. They might Americanize it. Yeah, bubble tea, a, boba tea. Yeah. I've I had it once in New York uh, a while ago. It was weird. Nah, with that with the balls at the bottom, right? Yeah, the, it's, it's weird. It's weird, right? Yeah. yeah. Demo, thumbs down on the boba yeah. tea. Uh, you know, to to take one of your words, it's not for me. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> not for me. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Mike D, have you ever had a bet that tea? No, I don't know. I mean, I would try it, but it reminds me of that drink that was back in like the nineties, that orbits. Yeah. With those little gel balls that were in it that just floated around. Yeah, and you're yeah. drinking, you're like, mm, I don't know about the texture of this. It's just weird. Mm-mm. I see I, uh, I see it as do you ever like if you were eating something like when you were a little kid? And say you're eating a sandwich and you drop your fucking sandwich in the fucking drink. It's like drinking that to me. Where it's like, it's just like, I don't know, fucking weird. Nah, yeah, I have no interest in it. Um, they could keep their little ball to themselves. Um, okay, Damo. If you got a chance to ride in a yacht or a private jet, what would you do? Uh, depends where we're going. Wherever you want, uh... Damo. <laughs> Fantasy Island. <laughs> mm. I'd probably do the, the private jet. You do the jet? Yeah. Okay. Mike D? I don't like big planes as it is. Screw the jet. I don't even like the damn ocean, but I'd, I'd probably go with the <laughs> yacht over the plane. You know, this is a weird one because I don't, I would probably prefer the yacht, but. I would feel like I'm more stuck in the yacht. And if something happens to the fucking boat, I feel like I'm fucked. In the plane, it's going to happen a lot quicker. I might not notice. So if something happens with it. You probably ain't getting a parachute. So. 
No, I'm I'm going. You, I want to be like one of those fucking uh, Stretch Armstrongs. I'm gonna hit the ground and just bounce, probably. <laughs> you know what I mean? Be like a fucking dodgeball. I don't know, man. E- either way, like it just you feel helpless. I guess I don't know. There's so many accents, especially with those little fucking pond jumper planes. You know. I mean, if, if you're talking like, you know, like like a rock star, uh, like 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 you know, like like Trump's plane. Yeah, like I mean, yeah, like something a billionaire is. is yeah. I don't know. But on the yacht, I mean, I would prefer the yacht if the yacht didn't go too deep in the ocean. <laughs> it just stood like you know, you had all the all the broads and stuff on there on the yacht, and everybody's well, fucking having you, a good time. You know. Yeah. Probably, probably not different. Not much different than a cruise ship, you know. I'm yeah. thinking the yacht probably has a little bit better safety measures as far as like little life rafts to get out on. Sure. Yeah. So. yeah. To me, to me, it all depends on where you're going. And you just got to worry about the sharks. If I'm spending it for a day, I think I would definitely feel more comfortable on the yacht than on a plane. If they said six hours, you know, private jet ride, or six hours, you know, the yacht's got to be cooler, right? Yeah. Yeah, yacht rock. We could be fucking chilling. Yeah, I picked the yacht. That's a no brainer now. If I get in the water, if I go in the water, I'm done anyway. So it doesn't matter. Um, all right, Demo. Would you prefer a carnival or a circus? Uh I like the carnivals. I was never a fan of the circus. Uh Mike D. Eh, neither at this point. I'm- Carnivals, I don't go on too many rides. I don't trust the rednecks that even put these things together <laughs> there, you know? <laughs> they get these, like, little inbred brothers wherever they go. The carnies? Yeah, man. The I don't, and they're putting together these rides that are, like, 50, 100 feet in the air. Screw that. Yeah. I, I think um, I kind of find the circus kind of boring. Probably better when I was a kid. Uh, I would dig the carnival, but it would have to be one of those old school, like I'm scared carnivals, you know, where you go to and you see like yeah. all the shady shit. And I think I would dig that, you know, so you mean, like the, the freak school. show carnival. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would like that. That would be pretty good. Um, all right. I got two more questions for you. Demo, if you were, if you had a decent amount of money and you were going to decorate one room in your house and your options were an Egyptian room or a Roman room, what would you do? Uh, probably go with the Roman theme. Toga party for the- oh. yeah. <laughs> Bring the grapes, Mike D. <laughs> <laughs> grapes and wine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what would you do, Mike D? Uh, I would probably go with like an Egyptian theme. It's it's cool. I like the. I always like that. Yeah. I was I should go with the Roman, but I would go with the Egyptian theme because I just love the artwork. I love all the crazy looking artwork. Um, yeah, that's probably what I would pick. Okay, last question here, Demo. Sports team you can't stand. Uh, ooh. Uh, it's a close one between the the Devils and the Rangers. Uh, mm. probably go. Devils, I think. Demo, hockey fan, going to the Devils. Mike D. Definitely the Mets. <laughs> yeah, you, you get the Mets, and like they're not, they're just a, like now nah, they're having a good year, but usually you're just a sucky team, and their fans are just the worst. Like, like the, the Yankees at least have good, passionate fans. You know, the Mets fans are just a bunch of fucking douchebags. They come down to our stadium and they just act like a fucking bunch of asswads. How do they become Mets fans anyway? Like, say, say like your grandfather, right? You know, who was around, you know, when there was just the Yankees and the Dodgers and maybe even the Giants, if you want to go way back, when there was a New York Giants. How do you become a Mets fan? I don't know. know. But their name stands for the Metropolitans. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Met is their 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 mascot, the stupid big ass baseball head. Like, yeah. it's just I don't know. They're the worst. They really are. Like, I I I think like uh, if I was a Dodgers, a Brooklyn, if, if I was we're going back sixty years or whatever, if I was a fan of the Brooklyn Dodgers and they moved, I'd probably be a fan of the L.A. Dodgers. 
Fair enough. Con- yeah, it's a continuation. If I was a if I was a Philadelphia A's fan, I'd be an Oakland A's fan. You know, um, and then you have like then like this the Mets come around. What are you just going to abandon the Yankees and start liking them? Like, how does that work? I guess it's got to be like the newer generation. You're probably with the people that are probably within the vicinity of the stadium. You know, they go to the games and they become fans. Well, uh, I guess a, a more recent one would be the Minnesota North Stars when they moved to Dallas. Mm-hmm. So, so what happens when, like, a few years later, you know, when there is a team that comes back, Minnesota Wild, do you stop being a fan of the Dallas Stars? Or you start becoming a fan. It's weird, of, yeah. You know what I mean? Right, because you got all those players you were like following, and now they're you probably yeah, yeah. You're right, right. If your home team's not is a different. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. yeah, I don't understand how that works. I mean, for me, I like sports in general. I really don't have a team I hate, to be honest with you. Um, I would, I'm going to go with the Padres just because they got the worst outfits I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm go the they they do, but I you don't know, know. You know what they remind they me of? Shitty uniforms. When I look at their uniforms, I, I it makes me think of a frozen banana. <laughs> it's got like that color. I don't, know. I don't know. The Padres always had Tony Gwynn. I love Tony Gwynn. Yeah, it was one of the best ever. But, <clears throat> yeah. You, yeah, you know, a team I didn't like because their their uniforms was the Minis- uh the uh, Montreal Expos. Dude, oh, I, I love the Expos. I oh. used to like them, oh, dude. I, I, I literally felt bad for them because their their uniforms were just fucking fugly. They, they had that stupid mascot too, Ubi. Yeah, <laughs> what was he like? A uh, I can't remember. Exactly. I want to say something like orangey. I could be completely wrong, but I just remember the name. And he was and stupid they always looking. Suck. They always suck. For some reason, I, I can't. I don't remember their their mascot, but for some reason, I'm thinking, you know. The mascot logo reminded me of the hamburger helper guy, but I don't remember. <laughs> this is what's in yeah. my head. <laughs> uh, before we wrap up, we'll let Damien be the tiebreaker here because I love these uniforms. Mike can't stand them. And let's see what Damien's opinion is. I love the Phillies baby blue, the, the, the 80s oh, yeah. like pajamas. Mike D, don't like them at all. Damo, nope. what, what do you yeah, lay with I, this I, one? I, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, oh. You know, the, 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 um, 80s. the Vet Stadium yeah. era. You, like the, the big P, uh, I yeah. you know that's what I grew up on the big P. Oh, so did I. But those were but the worst outfits. I love. I I like the the uh, the pinstripe ones they had in the yes. Ends. I thought they were the best of the third. They're the classiest looking ones uh, with the big P, mm-hmm. and the white and the red pinstripes. I, th- I thought those were. Was that uh, with the darker red? When they had more of the maroon red? You're talking about that uh, one? Yeah, I think it was a little more maroon, maroon red. Yeah, it was like they started wearing it like uh, for the 100th anniversary, like mm-hmm. uh, 1983 and, you know, th- through like the mid 80s. Um, you know, I wish they would go back to that. I, I do like the uh, the traditional P that they've been using for a while, but I wish they would use they they kind of go back to it once in a while. I like the blue hats with the red brim. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're pretty cool. You know, those, I like those the big P cool. too, too, too. I like yeah. the big P. Mike D, if you had a pick. You know, Damien gave us us. I gave mine. If you had to pick the one Phillies uniform, which one would it be? I'm with Damien. Same one. Okay. Yeah. That's right. The mm-hmm. pinstripe, and I think it was that maroon kind of red. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. All right, guys, mixtapes and tasty cakes. We'll see you next week.